a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Inception Inception is a 2010 science fiction film written, co-produced, and directed by Christopher Nolan, and co-produced by Emma Thomas. The film stars Leonardo DiCaprio as a professional thief who steals information by infiltrating the subconscious, and is offered a chance to have his criminal history erased as payment for the implantation of another person's idea into a target's subconscious. The ensemble cast additionally includes Ken Watanabe, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Marion Cotillard, Ellen Page, Tom Hardy, Dileep Rao, Killian Murphy, Tom Berenger, and Michael Caine. After the 2002 completion of Insomnia, Nolan presented to Warner Brothers a written 80-page treatment about a horror film envisioning Dream Stealers, based on lucid dreaming. Deciding he needed more experience before tackling a production of this magnitude and complexity, Nolan retired the project, and instead worked on 2005's Batman Begins, 2006's The Prestige, and The Dark Knight in 2008. The treatment was revised over six months, and was purchased by Warner in February 2009. Inception was filmed in six countries, beginning in Tokyo on June 19, and ending in Canada on November 22. Its official budget was $160 million, split between Warner Brothers and Legendary. Nolan's reputation and success with The Dark Knight helped secure the film's $100 million in advertising expenditure. Inception's premiere was held in London on July 8, 2010. It was released in both conventional and IMAX theaters beginning on July 16, 2010. Inception grossed over $828 million worldwide becoming the fourth-highest-grossing film of 2010. The home video market also had strong results, with $68 million in DVD and Blu-ray sales. Inception opened to acclaim from critics, who praised its screenplay, score, and ensemble cast. It won four Academy Awards for Best Cinematography, Best Sound Editing, Best Sound Mixing, and Best Visual Effects, and was nominated for four more, Best Picture, Best Original Screenplay, Best Art Direction, and Best Original Score. Plot Dominic, Dom, Cobb and Arthur are extractors who perform corporate espionage using an experimental military technology to infiltrate the subconscious of their targets and extract valuable information through a shared dream world. Their latest target, Japanese businessman Sato, reveals that he arranged their mission himself to test Cobb for a seemingly impossible job planting an idea in a person's subconscious, or, inception, to break up the energy conglomerate of ailing competitor Morris Fisher. Sato wants Cobb to convince Fisher's son and heir, Robert, to dissolve his father's company. In return, Sato promises to use his influence to clear Cobb of a murder charge, allowing Cobb to return home to his children. Cobb accepts the offer and assembles his team, Eames, a conman and identity forger, Yusuf, a chemist who concocts a powerful sedative for a stable, dream within a dream, strategy. And Ariadne, an architecture student tasked with designing the labyrinth of the dream landscapes, recruited with the help of Cobb's father-in-law, Professor Stephen Miles. While dream sharing with Cobb, Ariadne learns his subconscious houses an invasive projection of his late wife Mal. When the elder Fisher dies in Sydney, Robert Fisher accompanies the body on a 10-hour flight back to Los Angeles, which the team uses as an opportunity to sedate and take Fisher into a shared dream. At each dream level, the person generating the dream stays behind to set up a kick that will be used to awaken the other sleeping team members from the deeper dream level. To be successful, these kicks must occur simultaneously at each dream level. A fact complicated due to the nature of time which flows much faster in each successive level. The first level is Yusuf's dream of a rainy Los Angeles. The team abducts Fisher, but they are attacked by armed projections from Fisher's subconscious, which has been specifically trained to defend him against such intruders. The team takes Fisher and a wounded Sato to a warehouse, where Cobb reveals that while dying in the dream would normally wake Sato up. The powerful sedatives needed to stabilize the multi-level dream will instead send a dying dreamer into limbo, a world of infinite subconscious from which escape is extremely difficult, if not impossible, and a dreamer risks forgetting they are in a dream. Despite these setbacks, the team continues with the mission. 
Eames impersonates Fisher's godfather, Peter Browning, to suggest Fisher reconsider his father's will. Yusuf drives the van as the other dreamers are sedated into the second level. In the second level, a hotel dreamed by Arthur. Cobb persuades Fisher that he has been kidnapped by Browning and Cobb is his subconscious protector. Cobb persuades him to go down another level, to explore Browning's subconscious. The third level is a fortified hospital on a snowy mountain dreamed by Eames. The team has to infiltrate it, and hold off the guards as Cobb takes Fisher into the equivalent of his subconscious. Yusuf, under pursuit by Fisher's projections in the first level, deliberately drives off a bridge and initiates his kick too soon. This causes an avalanche in Eames' level and removes the gravity of Arthur's level, forcing him to improvise a new kick synchronized with the van hitting the water. Mal's projection emerges and kills Fisher. Cobb kills Mal, and Sato succumbs to his wounds. Cobb and Ariadne enter limbo to rescue Fisher and Sato, while Eames sets up a kick by rigging the hospital with explosives. Cobb reveals to Ariadne that he and Mal went to limbo while experimenting with the dream-sharing technology. Sedated for a few hours of real time, they spent 50 years in a dream constructing a world from their shared memories. When Mal refused to return to reality, Cobb used a rudimentary form of inception by reactivating her totem and reminding her subconscious that their world was not real. However, when she woke up, Mal still believed that she was dreaming. In an attempt to Wake up, for real, Mal committed suicide and framed Cobb, for her death to force him to do the same. Facing a murder charge, Cobb fled the US leaving his children in the care of Professor Miles. Through his confession, Cobb makes peace with his guilt over Mal's death. Ariadne kills Mal's projection and wakes Fisher up with a kick. Revived, at the Mountain Hospital, Fisher enters a safe room to discover and accept the planted idea, a projection of his dying father telling him to be his own man. While Cobb remains in limbo to search for Sato, the other team members ride the synchronized kicks back to reality. Cobb eventually finds an aged Sato in limbo and reminds him of their agreement. The dreamers all awake on the plane and Sato makes a phone call. Upon arrival at Los Angeles Airport, Cobb passes the U.S. immigration checkpoint and Professor Miles accompanies him to his home. Using his totem, a spinning top that spins indefinitely in a dream world, but falls over in reality, Cobb conducts a test to prove that he is indeed in the real world, but he ignores its result and instead joins his children in the garden. Development Initially, Nolan wrote an 80-page treatment about dream stealers. Originally, Nolan had envisioned Inception as a horror film, but eventually wrote it as a heist film even though he found that, traditionally, they, are very deliberately superficial in emotional terms. Upon revisiting his script, he decided that basing it in that genre did not work, because the story relies so heavily on the idea of the interior state, the idea of dream and memory. I realized I needed to raise the emotional stakes. Nolan worked on the script for 9 to 10 years. When he first started thinking about making the film, Nolan was influenced by that era of movies where you had The Matrix, you had Dark City, you had The Thirteenth Floor and, to a certain extent, you had Memento, too. They were based in the principles that the world around you might not be real. Nolan first pitched the film to Warner Brothers in 2001, but then felt that he needed more experience making large-scale films and embarked on Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. He soon realized that a film like Inception needed a large budget, because, as soon as you're talking about dreams, the potential of the human mind is infinite. And so the scale of the film has to feel infinite. It has to feel like you could go anywhere by the end of the film. And it has to work on a massive scale. After making The Dark Knight, Nolan decided to make Inception and spent six months completing the script. Nolan states that the key to completing the script was wondering what would happen if several people shared the same dream. Once you remove the privacy, you've created an infinite number of alternative universes in which people can meaningfully interact, with validity, with weight, with dramatic consequences. Leonardo DiCaprio was the first actor to be cast in the film. Nolan had been trying to work with the actor for years and met him several times, but was unable to convince him to appear in any of his films until inception. DiCaprio finally agreed, 
because he was intrigued by this concept, this dream heist notion and how this character is going to unlock his dream world and ultimately affect his real life. He read the script and found it to be very well written, comprehensive, but you really had to have Chris in person to try to articulate some of the things that have been swirling around his head for the last eight years. DiCaprio and Nolan spent months talking about the screenplay. Nolan took a long time rewriting the script in order to make sure that the emotional journey of his character was the driving force of the movie. On February 11, 2009, it was announced that Warner Brothers purchased Inception, a spec script written by Nolan. Locations and sets Principal photography began in Tokyo on June 19, 2009, with the scene where Sato first hires Cobb during a helicopter flight over the city. The production moved to the United Kingdom and shot in a converted airship hangar in Cardington, Bedfordshire, north of London. There, the hotel bar set which tilted 30 degrees was built. A hotel corridor was also constructed by Guy Hendrix Dias, the production designer, Chris Corbold the special effects supervisor, and Wally Pfister, the director of photography. It rotated a full 360 degrees to create the effect of alternate directions of gravity for scenes set during the second level of dreaming, where dream sector physics become chaotic. The idea was inspired by a technique used in Stanley Kubrick's 2001, A Space Odyssey. Nolan said, I was interested in taking those ideas, techniques, and philosophies and applying them to an action scenario. The filmmakers originally planned to make the hallway only 40 feet long, but as the action sequence became more elaborate, the hallway's length grew to 100 feet. The corridor was suspended along eight large concentric rings that were spaced equidistantly outside its walls and powered by two massive electric motors. Joseph Gordon Levitt, who plays Arthur, spent several weeks learning to fight in a corridor that spun like a giant hamster wheel. Nolan said of the device, it was like some incredible torture device. We thrashed Joseph for weeks. But in the end we looked at the footage, and it looks unlike anything any of us has seen before. The rhythm of it is unique, and when you watch it, even if you know how it was done, it confuses your perceptions. It's unsettling in a wonderful way. Gordon Levitt remembered. It was six day weeks of just, like, coming home at night battered. The light fixtures on the ceiling are coming around on the floor, and you have to choose the right time to cross through them, and if you don't, you're going to fall. On July 15, 2009, filming took place at University College London for the sequences occurring inside a Paris College of Architecture in the story, including the library, Flaxman Gallery, and Gustave Tuck Theatre. Filming moved to France where they shot Cobb entering the College of Architecture and the pivotal scenes between Ariadne and Cobb, in a bistro and then on the Beer Hakim Bridge. For the explosion that takes place during the bistro scene, the local authorities would not allow the actual use of explosives. High-pressure nitrogen was used to create the effect of a series of explosions. Fister used six high-speed cameras to capture the sequence from different angles and make sure that they got the shot. The visual effects department then enhanced the sequence, adding more destruction and flying debris. For the Paris folding sequence and when Ariadne creates the bridges, green screen and CGI were used on location. Tangier, Morocco, doubled as Mombasa, where Cobb hires Eames and Yusuf. A foot chase was shot in the streets and alleyways of the historic Medina Quarter. To capture this sequence, Fister employed a mix of handheld camera and steady cam work. Tangier was also used to film an important riot scene during the initial foray into Saito's mind. Filming moved to the Los Angeles area, where some sets were built on a Warner Brothers soundstage, including the interior rooms of Saito's Japanese castle. The dining room was inspired by the Nijo castle built around 1603. These sets were inspired by a mix of Japanese architecture and Western influences. The production also staged a multi-vehicle car chase on the streets of downtown Los Angeles, which involved a freight train crashing down the middle of a street. To do this, the filmmakers configured a train engine on the chassis of a tractor trailer. The replica was made from fiberglass molds taken from authentic train parts and then matched in terms of color and design. Also. The car chase was supposed to be set in the midst of a downpour, but the LA weather stayed typically sunny. 
the filmmakers were forced to set up elaborate effects to give the audience the impression that the weather was overcast and soggy. LA was also the site of the climactic scene, where a Ford Econoline van flies off the Skylarheim bridge in slow motion. This sequence was filmed on and off for months, with the van being shot out of a cannon, according to actor Dileep Rao. Capturing the actors suspended within the van in slow motion took a whole day to film. Once the van landed in the water, the challenge for the actors was not to panic. And when they ask you to act, it's a bit of an ask, explained Killian Murphy. The actors had to be underwater for four to five minutes while drawing air from scuba tanks. Underwater buddy breathing is shown in this sequence. Cobb's house was in Pasadena. The hotel lobby was filmed at the sub building in Century City. Limbo was made on location in Los Angeles and Morocco with a beach scene filmed at Palace Verdes Beach with CGI buildings. North Hope Street in Los Angeles was the primary filming location for Limbo, with green screen and CGI being used to create the dream landscape. The final phase of principal photography took place in Alberta in late November 2009. The location manager discovered a temporarily closed ski resort. Fortress Mountain, an elaborate set was assembled near the top station of the Canadian chairlift, taking three months to build. The production had to wait for a huge snowstorm, which eventually arrived. The ski chase sequence was inspired by Nolan's favorite James Bond film. On Her Majesty's Secret Service, what I liked about it that we've tried to emulate in this film is Teresa tremendous balance in that movie of action and scale and romanticism and tragedy and emotion. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?